Okay, what I'm going to do here, uh, I mentioned I was going to uh, have another video on how to replace a transformer without destroying the new transformer. And I forgot to put it in, so now I'm finally getting around to it after being reminded. Uh, if you're replacing a transformer, number one, the transformer is probably not the part that failed. The transformer is probably just a symptom of the failure. They usually have very long lives, um, very seldom burn out on their own. They can, but very seldom do. So, if you have a transformer that has failed, and you replace the transformer, when you put the new one in, and it fails immediately. Uh, these things fail two ways. One, uh, if there's an internal fuse, and they usually will say sometimes on the outside of them whether there's, if there's an internal fuse, and they'll, they'll just fail immediately, just like that. Uh, I don't actually recommend using a uh, transformer with a fuse in it. Uh, I recommend putting fuses on the secondary of transformers, but I'd put an inline fuse. Uh, so it can be replaced. So if you have one that does not have a fuse in it, it's going to start snap, crackle, and popping. Kind of sound like bacon frying. By the time you hear that, you can also smell it, and it's pretty much toast. So uh, I did burn one of these things up. I've got a transformer burn up uh, where I just purposely burned one up. But anyway. Uh, I'm going to show you how to test. Now this one obviously is not in, an, in a piece of equipment or anything like that. And so you've got to use your imagination a little bit. I've got the primary hooked up here and the secondary is available here. This one does have a couple extra wires on it because this transformer is good for 240 and 208. And it's got separate uh, taps for uh, 240 and 208. Use as white as a common. This is pretty pretty much the uh, color code in the wires. It's white as common, black as 120, and then you have the other two colors. You got orange and red for the two other voltages. If you have a 208 system, you'd hook up the 208, and if you had 240, you'd hook up 240. Uh, when you are hooking up 208, 240, don't uh, don't blow that and put it on the wrong one because uh, it'll either read too low of secondary voltage or too high and oftentimes you know won't work. Sometimes it will but most of the time they don't work. Okay let's get back to where we're at. We have put a new transformer in. I've hooked up the primary but I haven't hooked up the secondary yet. Well I'm going to go ahead and hook up the secondary with the power off and so when I turn the power on, then I can find out if my amp draw is excessive. Because that's what's happened. If there's a short, the amp draw is excessive, and it overloads the transform and burns it up. So uh, I will have the power off. And in this case, all I'm going to do is run it through this ammeter, put the wires together. Now this dead short obviously is not, the transformer is not going to be able to handle this, so it would fail. Now they don't fail right away. Now notice my ammeter clamped around one wire, uh, and if I plug this thing in, okay, now you're showing zero amps, now I'm going to plug this thing in. Now, it's showing 8 amps. Okay. 8 amps is way too much. Uh, these, if it's a 40 VA transformer, it'll do about 1.6 uh, amps. You can use the EIR formula for this if you want, but 40 VA is a very common transformer. And so it should be about 1.6. Well, it's 8. If it's 8, it's not going to work. You know, it's going to burn it up, just like the other one did. So, what you'll do, 
you, let's say you have it all connected uh, into the system and not just shorted like this. Uh, and so what you'll start doing is eliminating things. Uh, there will be a wire going from the transformer, the common side of the transformer, probably to the chassis of the equipment. Disconnect that wire. See if you still have a short. And it's just kind of a, uh, a hopscotch thing. Start eliminating components that could be shorted. Uh, let's say you have a relay contact or something like that that this thing is supposed to energize. Well, pull one of the wires off the contactor. If uh, that stops it, the contactor was a problem. And it's just a question of going through each one. Now, I'm going to let this thing do its thing for a little while and we'll see if we can get any sounds out of it. Okay, you can see there it's drawn seven amps. Uh, okay, I can hear it kind of snap, crackling, and popping inside there. Um, I'll turn up the uh, volume on it and see if you can hear it. it uh, it'll take a little while to fail. I'm not going to let it fail because Mom will be mad at me for stinking up the house. Okay, if you listen real close, you could hear that in there. Uh, but let's go ahead and just summarize what we've done. Clamp one side of the secondary wires. If it does, do not leave the transformer in. Start pop scotching around, eliminating parts until you find out which one is the problem. It'll save you a lot. Uh, burned up transformers and rather embarrassing situations where you've stunk up somebody's house because you burned up another transformer. Uh, most transformer failures have something to do with the chassis ground. Because virtually every furnace anymore, the transformer has the common side hooked to the chassis ground. Something may have shorted, sometimes a screw will be put in the wrong place or something like that. And that'll cause it. So that's pretty much uh, how you determine whether there's a short in the system without destroying the transformer. But don't leave it on because it will. You leave it on for a little while the next thing you know it's burned up and you got to put another one on. Not the most expensive part in the world but a little bit embarrassing. Okay that's it on the transformer fix.